Grab some popcorn, folks. This is going to be a good one. Unbelievable things Kamala Harris has done because the media will never tell you. <laughs> oh, and it sure would be a shame if this video got shared to every Democrat you know on Facebook. The Democrat queen is overseeing a fake news kingdom. <laughs> Security? That's <laughs> move. According to Axios, the Harris campaign has been caught red-handed rewriting news headlines. During the break, in terms of, is this something that's normal? Is this something that campaigns have been using? How do you defend kind of the... Yeah, well, this is, uh, this is part of paid advertising. I mean, if you are somebody who's reading a news outlet on your phone, you'll see embedded ads come up sometimes in those stories that for, you know, on first glance, look like a story by the outlet you're reading. But if you don't, you know, if you look at it more closely, it says sponsored content. I mean, this is something that the search engines do. It's part of the way they generate ad revenue. So there's nothing about it that is, um, you know, violates their uh, terms or is in any way unethical. I mean, this is, this is part of the way that paid advertising works. And, you know, you'll see it. It's certainly not just political campaigns who do it. I mean, just yeah. as I am reading things online, sometimes I'll double, you know, I'll, I'll sort of like double look at something because it seems it feels like it's it's an authentic piece of content and then you see it's paid so it is incumbent on the the viewer the reader the consumer to have a discerning eye not just on political content but on uh, other ads. she is suffering from the worst case of hemorrhoids i have ever seen that's why roger pedactor is dead he found captain winky Good night, everybody. We've got a wonderful audience. I'll be here all week. Be sure to tip your waitress. Because yeah. Kamala Harris, she's desperately trying to win over Gen Z. Because all the girls love me. Hey. All I need is a beat that's super bumping in for you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Now on with the show. And remember. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. Otherwise, I'm speaking. giving them a pro Kamala spin and then posting the phony results within Google search ads. A source familiar with the Harris team is defending the practice, saying that they are simply giving voters, quote, more context. Let me know. Drop a comment. Is Kamala Harris and Tim Walz's campaign just a bunch of hype and over sensationalized clickbait? Let me know in the comments. And while you're typing that one out, <laughs> have a listen to this shit. I mean, look at Elon, right? Elon, in being one of those powerful people, he's trying to be the most influential man in the world. It sounds like a commercial, but literally that's what Twitter has given him. I, I, I've got to say, I think he might be that. I don't, I don't even think he's trying to be. When you, when you talk about somebody who is setting up satellite links for war zones... And also controlling discourse in well, the most important well, media the, platform. That's I would think thing, he is right? the most powerful. Because Twitter is in every, almost every country, right? And so Twitter gives him the ability to connect to the prime minister, the head of every country in the world. That's right. And that, that person, whoever's in charge of that country, has an interest in what happens on Twitter. And what happens on Twitter, because of the control of the algorithms being the biggest user, is all dependent on Elon Musk. He literally, wherever his thumb wants to go, he gets to push as hard. And he certainly, he I mean, uh, he's transparent about where he wants things to go. I think he's very clear that uh, civil war is inevitable. Right. And that I mean, white people are under the concerning. gun. Concerning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's he'll, you know, it'll be like civil war is inevitable. And then he'll write underneath there. Hmm. You know, yep. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an understatement on there. But uh, I can't I can't decide whether or not it's better to know exactly where he stands and know where he's going to be put 
the thumb on because he's not he's clearly a very bright guy yeah, for sure. and he has a media empire that has the largest reach and most influence of anything on the face of the earth and there's no question he's going to leverage it for in sure. this election you, the, no question but the crazy part is he has more impact globally than he does domestically in my opinion right because when you go on x you see a preponderance of right-leaning people you don't see a lot they're all over my for you i've never clicked on any of these f things. well that's the whole thing that's the way algorithms work right he, what yes <laughs> They do the opposite of what I want? Yes. When somebody tells them, when you write an algorithm, I haven't written a lot, it's been a while, but when you write one, you get to set the, um, the parameters of what you want to see happen. And he certainly has done that to the things he likes. But it's different in other platforms. And the good news is, what, 20% of adults in the United States are on Twitter? So, I mean, there's 80% who aren't there. But isn't this a certain amount of uh, tech bro malpractice that there is this incredible... Uh, need in the marketplace of something that is slightly less uh, biased or, you know, toxic when it comes to there. And no, like they came out with threads and you're on it for two seconds. And you're like, I think I need an app. No, I like threads. Threads is getting better. Try it. No, yeah. it's getting Here's better. something that doesn't sell online. No, it's getting better. <laughs> you know, it's interesting how Jon Stewart tries, he tries to harp on and, 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 and try and criminalize Elon Musk for bringing internet connectivity around the world, which ironically was actually the job just domestically, locally here in this country of the former border czar and actual internet czar Kamala Harris for which she was unable to produce even after spending hundreds of millions of dollars. Wonder where that money went. But better yet, how about all the good that Elon Musk has done? For instance, him providing electricity and power solutions and internet connectivity to the residents of Lahaina in Maui, Hawaii, after the devastating DEW attack that the Biden administration showed up and gave folks what? Some pocket change? Come on, guys. Elon Musk, having zero connectivity to being a true elected official, has done far more for people in this country as a civilian than the President Joe Biden and the Vice President Kamala Harris combined. I don't see that as a bad thing, do you? You know, it's funny how Mark Cuban here is like, he's harping on and he's, he's losing it. He's really just losing control and he's attacking Elon Musk for having the ability to connect with prime ministers around the world. You know who else has that ability? Kamala Harris, Joe Biden. You know what they don't do? Connect with world leaders and prime ministers around the world. Hell. Kamala Harris won't even, she won't even connect with reporters and journalists. She, she, she's, it's gonna take her almost a month to have a sit down interview. Like she can't find time in her busy schedule that apparently her calendar was wide open for. And you're gonna point blame at Elon Musk because he's made it easy to connect and communicate because he realizes he understands the value in having these conversations and having this ability to communicate and connect but also realizes that he has the mental intellect and IQ level making him able to have these conversations for which Kamala Harris is completely just totally in, incapable of she's she's too she's too she can't do it she doesn't know what she's talking about and her objectives her agenda her, her agenda her her rhetoric her propaganda it goes against anything and everything that they would want which is another reason why we haven't heard much out of her recently. Oh, okay, and yeah, so Elon Musk even somewhat leveling the playing field as well here as the media controlled by the Democrats in the deep state and the left has tried to silence and, 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 and assassinate Donald Trump figuratively and literally. You wonder why CNN has never ever streamed a live stream of any Trump rally except for the Trump rally where Donald Trump was supposed to be murdered. Yeah, come on guys, do better, do better. Yeah, I don't, you know, this is like a, a schoolyard bully picking on kids and then the kids bringing their older brother or you know, a, 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 a older cousin or whatever to the schoolyard to make the fight fair. I don't see any problem with that, do you? And if you don't think that civil war is inevitable going down the path that we're going down with the possibility of Kamala Harris and Tim Walls being elected into 
office as president and vice president of the United States of America, then you've got another thing coming. And when that time comes, when it happens, or if it were to happen, expect to see the National Guard and, and tanks and military forces patrolling the streets, enforcing curfews, shooting people with paintball guns or maybe weighted rounds, or better yet, just standing down and letting cities burn to the ground. Yeah, that's a realistic possibility. And in fact, it would literally be history repeating itself as it's already occurred in Minnesota. I'm not making this stuff up, folks. And I can't decide on whether or not Jon Stewart's being serious or not, unfortunately, because he he does typically try to poke fun and, 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 and crack jokes about it all and maybe be on both sides of the fence here. And I think that now is a time where you need to really draw the line in the sand and pick and decide and choose what side you're really on. Fuck a paycheck. OK, Jon Stewart. But I like Elon Musk's transparency in comparison to Kamala Harris's ambiguity and vagueness, I have no idea what the hell she's going to do. You know, and I have no qualms with Elon Musk leveraging his own business in this election. I have no issues with that whatsoever. He is, in my opinion, next to the warrior president, the sole proponent of free speech. True. Free speech. Think about it. Elon Musk bought Twitter before he endorsed Donald Trump. Elon Musk bought he bought Twitter, now X, when he was really more of a moderate Democrat. And it's been since then that the Democrats have continued to push him away, a very, very smart and brilliant man to realize that he needs to use this platform, this power for good and not evil. And they have given him every single possible reason to do so. And X being completely consumed with right leaning. I mean, I don't know if that's entirely true, but I mean, that's more than likely where patriotic conservative populists are going to hang out and speak the truth. And those who do not fall in that category are going to be on the mainstream media, legacy, you know, leftist propaganda pushing news or on channels like or or some other YouTube channel or TikTok account or whatever that's pouring up and serving Kool-Aid for the masses. Jon Stewart's uh, comical ignorance on, on how algorithms work and saying, what? They do the opposite of what I want? Yes, that is exactly what the Kamala Harris campaign, the Kamala Harris administration, the, the, the Biden-Harris administration has done. They literally have done the opposite of what people wanted, which is what the reasoning behind why people voted for them to begin with, and then they did the opposite. They literally bait and switched. They lied and they're doing it again as if they have never done it before and people are falling for it left and right. And Mark Cuban talking about setting the parameters of what you want to see happen with algorithms. I can tell you guys firsthand that the algorithms serve the people. And if that weren't true, then we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. And in fact, the algorithms serving more of this right leaning, conservative, patriotic, populist, MAGA, MAGA movement is purely based on the fact that people want it. Whereas in comparison, legacy media, mainstream media, their TV ratings, their radio ratings, they can't control those algorithms. People have to actually choose and select to tune in for which they are not interested. Whereas for instance, People have to choose and select to tune in to the conversation slash interview that Elon Musk and Donald Trump had the other night on X Spaces. There's no algorithmic push for that. It was presented. It was offered. People chose to go sit and listen for hours. And that is literally the clearest definition and an example that I can provide of people choosing and explicitly voicing and voting for what they really want. And this 20% of adults who are on Twitter, 80% are, who are not on X, formerly known as Twitter. Well, you know, Trump and Elon crushed those numbers with the conversation pulling in users between the age of 25 to 34 really taking hold here at 70%. But the beauty of this is, in my opinion, is that we do have platforms like these and folks like, like myself and like my wife, Squirrel Tribe, and many other channels that you guys watch, which, hey, let me know down in the comments. What are the top five channels you guys are watching right now? Let me know 
in the comments. Maybe we can start doing some collabs and some live streams together. That might be pretty cool, right? Some, some joint podcast conversations. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that even if 80% of adults are not on X, not on Twitter, then guess what? You've got folks like us bringing X in these conversations to you so you don't miss out. Because I can assure you a majority of my audience is in the adult range. So our, our reach extends far and wide and you guys continue to help with that push by sharing these videos. So thank you so much for doing that. Mark Cuban is what, what a sellout. You know, he's dogging Trump, he's bashing Trump, he's bashing Elon and he comes out and he says, oh, I like threads. I like sucking Mark Zuckerberg's. Threads is fucking garbage, it's trash. It's more leftist, Democrat, liberal, progressive propaganda. And I think Mark Cuban is a complete sellout and I think he's being paid off to do this. Essentially, in this whole exchange, this conversation, Jon Stewart is ultimately describing socialism. He's describing this, this, this world in which Tim Walls would prefer and Kamala Harris and the, the Harris campaign and the puppet, the folks pulling the strings behind the scenes, they, that's what they would want, okay? I mean, this is about as crazy as people attacking Elon Musk for literally stepping up and protecting our First Amendment rights. <laughs> and Elon Musk, he posts this up on X. When they keep telling you that you are threatening free speech for advocating for free speech. <laughs> Wait, you're serious? <laughs> this is about as crazy as people, for instance, the mayor, this Florida mayor trying to make Donald Trump move out of his home, evict him force him to be homeless, theoretically, in the state of Florida. George, be easy, breaking. Oh, and this one, this one, folks. The mayor of Palm Beach is considering shutting down Mar-a-Lago and kicking Trump out of his own house. Mayor Daniel Moore says, quote, in my mind, if the road is closed, the Mar-a-Lago club is closed. You can't have it both ways, boys and girls. After the attempt on Trump's life in Butler on July 13th, more developing shocking details coming from that one, so stay tuned. Secret Service increased personnel around the property in closed South Ocean Boulevard, the road running along Mar-a-Lago. Police say at a minimum, the closure will last through election day. And now the mayor wants to use the road's closure as an opportunity to close Mar-a-Lago as well. Local residents also say that they don't feel safe because of the new checkpoints added by the Secret Service. Our residents don't feel safe right now, quote, is what one of the council members said. But I don't know about you guys. The Secret Service is designed and they're there for safety and protection. So how could their presence make you feel unsafe? just doesn't make sense. She has now directed the town council to research whether it could close Mar-a-Lago until the road reopens. And ladies and gentlemen, this woman here looks kind of rough. Uh, hey, is she really a Republican or is she a Democrat? I looked it up. I couldn't really tell. I couldn't really figure out where her stance and position was, but it seems like it was leaning more towards Republicans. So would she be considered a rhino? And this is all more of a political attack, okay, and weaponization by the left to prevent Donald Trump from succeeding in his efforts and ultimately winning as we know he should and will, but like they're getting, they're getting more desperate, they're getting more ruthless. And honestly, after this, history repeats itself, folks. We are going to see a, quite possibly another threatening, life-threatening event taking place because they want to take him out. But Mark Cuban, that guy, I don't get him. I don't get him. But like Trump said, he doesn't know how a Jewish person could vote for Kamala Harris. Uh, I want to point something out to you, my okay. friend. Uh, in July of 2015, you said, quote, Trump is probably the best thing to happen to politics in a long time. I don't care what his actual positions are. But last night on Twitter, you officially joined the Never Trump Club. What the fuck happened to Mark Cuban? Like, really? Live PD Dave put this up on X and he asks, who thinks climate change hypocrite Mark Cuban is a royal douche nozzle? <laughs> Patrick Bet David, PBD, uh, over at Valuetainment, he put up on X, Mark Cuban's recent attacks towards Trump and Musk reveals only two possible outcomes. Number one, he's either plotting his next big move by CNN, maybe, question mark 
buy a media platform since he sold a big chunk of the Mavs campaign for 2028 or two, he has no moves and he's just envious. Which one do you guys think it is? PBD says that if it's number one, then more power to him. Attack the big dogs in media and politics. If he doesn't and it's envy, number the second option, the, the latter, then here's why he's acting the way that he has. There are two types of competitors out there is what PBD shares. Those who win by outworking, out improving, out strategizing and outlasting. Those who no longer work as hard as they once did and do everything in their power to discredit their competitors ahead of them would be the other. Both at real Donald Trump and at Elon Musk have something he doesn't have and quite possibly can never get. The only thing that can make this any better is if Elon Musk and maybe Donald Trump decided to go in and buy CNN. That would be epic or ABC. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It's ethics. The man told Mike Pence not to certify the election. The man called the governor, uh, state of secretary of state, or was it governor? I forget. And asked for 11,072 votes. The man has stolen from more hardworking Americans. You were against Trump in 2016, though. You were against Trump in 2016. Right, but he, he was unethical then, and he's still unethical. And in 20, right. That's Right, but that, that's the whole point. I actually started off supporting Donald, and then I got to know him better. When did you support him? Like 2015. I was like, he's great. He's the, you know, he's not a typical Stepford candidate. I thought that was a positive. I, th I would then think, as you I think got, that's a positive, right? A business guy yeah, who's did, pretty practical, but then I got to know not him. ideological. Then I got to, Trump University, Trump Soho, stole $4 million from a friend of mine that had Sue to get it back. Mike Pence, you know, 40 you out just, of 44 people. Just take a look at the four years, because each of these are just going to be separate sort of personal attack rabbit holes. Look at the country in those no, four years. No, they're personal attack rabbit holes. They're legitimate things that actually so, happen. So do you think the country, this, over, this, do you think the economy prospered and border crossing issues were far better under Donald Trump under those four years? than they've been no. in the last four years. You know, you disagree no, on that because, premise too. No, because if you look at border car, what, what was Obama's nickname? The deporter in chief. Mm -hmm. If you look at actual crossings, they were lower under Obama. And when Obama came in, they were higher and he continued to lower them until the last couple months. On the economy, Obama took a fucked up economy and improved it and Trump inherited that, right? And actually inflation grew by 25% under Trump over Obama. But the one certainty about the office of the president of the United States is the complete uncertainty that you have no idea what comes next. Would you agree with that? Yes. OK. And so in my mind, and I think a lot of people's minds that oppose Donald Trump is that you want somebody there that is educated on the world, but more importantly, just is ethical, right? So that they make ethical decisions. You want somebody when there is no precedent, it's never happened before. You want somebody that has hired not people who are most loyal, like Tony Soprano might have done, but hired the very best people. And those people want to stay and work for them, not that they're loyal. You want somebody whose first inclination is not to do what's in their own best personal interest. So right? can I just you say- You can't deny that's Donald Trump. I, I, I'm, I'm... It's just like a CEO of a company. Would you hire somebody that has a long history of stealing from people, See, of being I, unethical? You, you is, would is, not, and you know it. Is Donald Trump a perfect person? No, he is not. Am I a perfect no, we're person? Not talking about I'm not. Are you a perfect person? No, you're not. No, but you're, we have we're to ask not talking about who's the actual best have president. You ever stolen the money? Have you, right now. I've never no, stolen money from anybody. Ever, no. Either have I. I and, and, right? Have you ever I had a company? I have no evidence to say that Donald Trump has either. Oh, I do for sure. Ask Barbara Corcoran, right? You know, she had to sue to get her money back. Ask anybody from Trump University. Ask people who um, bought condos in Trump Soho. Ask people from, you know, um, Trump Foundation that gave money there. Ask people who are giving money today and he's using that money for his legal fees. So, this isn't like a little discretion. This is a habit. Mark, I, That's I think that, why I, think I that, can't support him. Look. You were talking about ethics. You would not. Have you ever told any of your employees to short pay a vendor no. just to try to save some money? No. Either have I. Can you really blame them? I mean, this is all hearsay, really. But the facts, the proof is being exposed. And Donald Trump should have never lost that election.
So what Mark Cuban's talking about here, in my opinion, is entirely inaccurate and false. And Donald Trump was literally just trying to save America. Can you imagine where we would be today if Donald Trump were president in 2020 instead of Biden Harris? Can you imagine how much better off we would be? How much safer we would be? Talk about unethical. Y'all should look into some of the deals that Mark Cuban has been engaged with after the fact on Shark Tank. Yeah, really eye opening. But this is all a personal vendetta. This is all hearsay. The term stole, ah, relative, especially when you're in business and the amount and size of these transactions that occur with the legal teams involved. Yeah, I would take everything Mark Cuban says with a grain of salt, folks. Trust but verify. I would wonder how much Mark Cuban really got to know Donald Trump or really got to know the people who tell tall tales and perpetuate lies and create these mistruths to destroy and try to slander Donald Trump's character, which is anything but the truth. You wanna talk about stealing money? Let's talk about the Biden-Harris campaign. They stole hundreds of millions of dollars from their donors and guess what? They were not going to refund that money. That's why Kamala Harris is running for president right now. But you also haven't heard a word from her since she's accepted this and is pretending to play this role as potential president, just rereading scripts and teleprompters in various cities across the country. So you're telling me that Obama improved the economy, Trump inherited it, improved the economy, and then Biden-Harris inherited that and destroyed it? Okay. I hear you. I'm in agreement with that. How about you guys? And this idea of the uncertainty of the presidency and having no idea of what comes next is exactly what Kamala Harris is exhibiting now because you have no idea what comes next because she tells you absolutely nothing. And you do want someone educated on the world, for instance, as Mark Cuban has said here, and someone who's ethical. And Kamala Harris is exactly neither one of those two. She is completely uneducated on the world and she is extremely unethical as we have already seen her flip-flopping, going back and forth, and the lies that she's getting the media to tell and the paid promotions that her campaign is illegally getting folks to uh, promote her on social media, paying people to show up at rallies, essentially buying votes. Um, Unintelligent, uneducated, unethical, there's your trifecta right there. And hiring the very best people. I don't know why Mark Cuban chose to relate and compare Donald Trump to Tony Soprano, but I like the Sopranos. But hiring the best people, the Biden-Harris administration has never done that. And you can look at their alphabet-based cabinet that they have put in place in the last three and a half years, and it's clearly obvious. And the most recent obvious addition is this Tim Walls ad. Like, just bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. And in comparison, Donald Trump selecting J.D. Vance to be his VP running mate. I mean, he surrounds himself with really great people. And <sighs> speaking of surrounding himself with people and ethics, Kamala Harris also wants to empty out and ban detention centers and basically create a wide open border. And she says that there's no need for walls. OK, there's no need for walls. This is this is very strange because this is at the same time when we see this huge spike, this surge of Venezuelan migrants hitting this country. OK. Oh, and how about this one? Jennifer Lynn Lawrence, attention needed. I have a friend who is down in Mexico and crosses the border often. He's telling me that over 300,000 Venezuelans have arrived today in Tijuana alone. When he went to cross the U.S. border, this is what they told me. Quote, they didn't even ask my identity document or passport. They were just waving everyone on. Really weird. What the hell is happening? So a Venezuelan gang takes over an entire building in Aurora, Colorado. The property owner loses control of the property to the point they have to get the city and the police involved to condemn the building to evict these people. The people in the building beg the city to give them more time, but the city says not. But don't worry, they provided them with hotel vouchers. <laughs> Brain explosion emoji. I can't. But the same person who says this country doesn't need walls and illegal immigrants and folks that are here undocumented are not criminals. We don't need walls. We don't need these borders. 
is the same person who literally has walls around her own residence. The same person who literally has some form of blockage between her and the outside world trespassers at either her primary residence or uh, her, her vice presidential residence or her condos with locked doors and guards and a doorman and security measures. Yet the same securities and protections that she puts in place to keep unwanted people out of her home, she refuses to do for this country to keep unwanted people out of our home. Make that make sense. And Mark Cuban, he makes a really good comparison and analogy here. And it's like a it's like a CEO of a company. Would you hire someone who has a track record in history of making poor decisions, a track record in history of destroying businesses and destroying countries and destroying economies and destroying the livelihood of people and families and just wreaking havoc everywhere they go while laughing about it and cackling about it and joking around and not really having any real idea of where the hell she is, what she's saying, what she's doing, or better yet, what she's supposed to do. Because her job, she has yet to do for almost four years. And she's asking you to rehire her and in fact, promote her to a higher position. And talk about not being able to get a word in edgewise, Mark Cuban continues to talk over Vivek Ramaswamy, especially when Vivek begins to point out the flaws and bring rationale and logic and perspective to the conversation. And Mark Cuban just yells, he just talks over him. I wonder how many people had to sue Mark Cuban to get their money back. <laughs> maybe Mark Cuban should begin paying attention more, opening his eyes, maybe, maybe talk less, smile more. Have you ever seen Kamala Harris reference religion, acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? mention God in any way, shape, or form, recite a Bible verse. Yeah, I didn't think so. Me neither. Our country needs a savior right now, and our country has a savior. And that's not me. That's somebody much higher up than me. Much higher up. We just do what we have to do. But the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ forever changed the world. It's impossible to think of the life of our own country without the influence of his example and of his teachings. Our miraculous founding, overcoming civil war, abolishing slavery, defeating communism and fascism, reaching boundless heights of science and discovery so many incredible things even right outside the magnificent skyscrapers and the whole development that this beautiful church is a part of so different so beautiful however so beautiful and uh, the united states ultimately becoming a truly great nation and we're going to keep it that way we're going to keep it that way we're not going to let it go not gonna let it go. But none of this could have ever happened without Jesus Christ and his followers and his church. None of it. And we have to remember that Jesus Christ is the ultimate source of our strength and of our hope and here and everywhere and for all time, Jesus Christ. And we want to just thank everybody who believes because we're believing in our country. We're believing in the world. We're believing in life. This Christmas, let us pray for the hundreds of thousands of men and women serving in our nation's military. I'm so proud of what we were able to do for our military. Oh, she wants to do away with Christmas, too. But just watch Fox News. 
But if Team Kamala wants to give voters more information, maybe they should uh, tell their AWOL candidate to stop hiding and face the press. It's been 24 days since VP Harris kicked off her presidential campaign, and she's still MIA on the press conferences. Even the liberal media is starting to beg her surrogates for one. What's on the vice president's schedule today? Uh, well, she's traveling and talking to voters and getting her message out there to the American people. I don't think she's got any campaign events on the schedule today, does she? Well, she and Governor Walls have been traveling across the country. Would it kill you guys to have a press conference? Why hasn't she had a press conference? <laughs> Listen, the vice president and Governor Walls uh, have been busy crisscrossing this country. Can you commit to a press conference before the end of the month? We will commit to directly engage with the voters that are actually going to decide this election. Kamala Harris is a piece of work, but she's just like Mark Cuban. She's just like Stephen A. Smith. We talked about last night. She's just like everybody else out there willing to sell their soul, lie to the American people, collect a check and keep it moving. Literally at the expense and cost of this entire country. And they really just don't care about us. All right, Dana, isn't this symbolic of who she is? Uh, fake it till you make it. Well, I, I would also say this. Uh, if it's working for you, why change it? It's because I think so it's Wednesday. I think couldn't she get through the next two days without doing an interview? Yeah. And then they're going to see her a lot Look next week convention. during the convention. So you can keep it going for another at least 10 days, probably. And then maybe she sits down with an interviewer, maybe like the Monday or the Tuesday after the convention and tries to get some sort of nice run into Labor Day. She will talk to the media at some point. It's like it's not like she never will. Um, and I think the media is starting to pay attention. The Wall Street Journal, edit, no, excuse me, the Washington Post editorial board had a whole list of questions. They're like, here's all these things we would love to ask her. I mean, at some point it will. I just go back to my... Yeah, the media is paying attention, but the media also realizes that they're paid to do a job. And just like the Harris campaign will pay influencers to promote and drive votes, they'll pay these media outlets to stay quiet, look the other way, turn the other cheek. And, and, and you know, Greg, isn't that the issue? I mean, you've got big tech and the Democrats and the mainstream media. They've been out of their minds over the possibility of misinformation and, and disinformation. Um, and yet for this, you can you can doctor up headlines. Mm -hmm. You can you can do a, a political ad on TV. And the sheriff comes out and says she didn't do anything in this case. And it's OK. Yeah. You know, it's just greedy. Right. Yeah, it's like it's like, do you really need to do this? Aren't they already biased enough in your favor? Yeah. It's like it reminds me of what uh, some of us kids did with report cards. You know, you turn an F into an A, <laughs> but it was kind of like they already got the A and it's like you wanted an A plus. Yeah, they turned a Biden into a Kamala. And yeah, it is greedy like this. Like it, it all started with greed from them stealing these campaign donations and misappropriating these funds, which is going to be a long drawn out legal battle. But, you know, time is on their side and they're going to they're going to kick that can down the road till after November 5th. That is greedy. You know, I did that. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> According to an MRC poll, over 70 percent of Democrats aren't familiar with Harris's radical policies. Yep. And that's a win for Harris. Yep. But it's got to be weird to be happy when fewer people know about your beliefs. <laughs> they don't think I'm as crazy as I really am. Yeah, but they've already said that this campaign, this election is going to be based on popularity and who's liked the most or better yet, who's most visible and most liked. And that's all that they're trying to do. They're trying to get Camp Kamala Harris to be most visible in a variety of different ways and liked. And then Donald Trump suppressed gag orders and then hated. And that's pretty much what they're banking on. Maybe rethink your beliefs. If you're grateful that you're hiding them from the public, you know what? Why, why not just listen to the public and have to like worry about what you said before? It's like a cheating husband. What did I say before? I've got to keep lying. It's actually kind of funny because Doug Imhoff. <laughs> no, why don't you just listen to the people? But right now, I think what you're saying is, you know what? You know what Kamala Harris is to the media? It's her second wife.
You know, Joe, they got they they they, they, they get, Joe's say, gone right? and they got the they got the second oh it's the second wife. It's she's like younger, she's prettier. younger, yeah. she's younger. Let her spend some money. Don't get to you know, cause it, cause you're gonna get tired of her soon enough. Shit, I was already tired of from day one. Charlie, the media <laughs> is already on her side. You know, she's changing headlines and there are already headlines in her favor. So she's going above and beyond. But it's almost like state run media. They're they're fine with it. I mean, 25 days. Yeah, and I think it's um, I, I, it's staggering and it is like state-run media. Unprecedented. And, and, and by the way, it's two different entities that do not care about this changing of the headlines. One is Google. They're like, well, it's legal, whatever. Yeah. But whatever, whether it's legal or not, or, 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 or you know, it goes by their rules or not. It, it, you're talking about The Guardian. You're talking about all of these different newspapers, these news outlets, who should be upset that this is this is the misinformation that they've been lecturing, yelling at us about for so long. But I think that I do think that at some point the public recognizes this. And I know that people complain about, you know, Trump does these big long speeches and he talks about all this stuff. And, and even some Republicans wish that he wouldn't. Uh, quite, be quite so entertaining, but he doesn't have a choice. I don't know how you can be upset that Trump says too much. And then on the flip side, Kamala Harris says absolutely nothing. That makes no sense to me. If he wants to break through these people and get his message to regular voters, like the voter that we saw uh, in that clip in the first block, the only way it's going to happen is if Donald Trump does it and does it in his way. And it's not like it, 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 this is not something you learn at politician school. Trump didn't go to politician school. Trump's not a politician. And so, yeah, maybe he colors outside the lines when he goes into these things and he says things that aren't particularly politic. But if it breaks through, it's the only way he can win. You know, Newsweek had a headline, Jessica, and, and they rewrite Trump's pledge to eliminate taxes on tips as, quote, Kamala Harris's tax proposal. And they go on to say that the majority of uh, Republicans endorse her tax proposal. Yeah. Now, watch this woman absolutely lose it. So I mean, the, th isn't that a bit much? <laughs> well, the thing with the no tax on tips policy, which the uh, Democratic senators have endorsed and it is by has bipartisan popularity, but there is a distinction between the, Dem the way the Democrats would do it and the way that Trump would do it. So the way the Kamala Harris plan would work is there would be an income limit because right now there's a loophole in Trump's approach, would which would allow people like corporate lawyers, for instance. Do you notice how they compared the Democrats to Trump? They're not comparing Kamala Harris to Trump. She said Democrats would do it one way and Trump would do it another way. So what does that tell you? to take advantage of it or people who work at hedge funds. So they wanna make sure that it's actually for people who are earning low wages. And I should note that the Culinary Union came out and endorsed Kamala Harris. Donald Trump went on this whole thing, like I'm so good for the servers. And he did this in Las Vegas. Like, they talked to a woman who said, you know, I'm, my, ta my tips are getting taxed. And the Culinary but, Union but it, didn't care and endorsed Kamala, who they believe will be better for her. But it was not her tax proposal. In it, fact, two years ago, she, she took, voted to strengthen the IRS I, so I'm that saying they could go there's after bipartisan it. support for no, it, but the way that she's doing- No, we're talking about Kamala. Yeah, pay attention, lady. Stop, quit with the memory hole bullshit. Not right, bipartisan. Right, she is, well, but she's part of bipartisan, which is why Jackie Rosen is also in support of it. Mm. Can I say also about the no press conferences thing? I've not spoken to one regular Democrat, no one who works in media, who cares about this at all, to Dana's point. If you are a voting Democrat and your candidate is not engaging in press conferences, you should be concerned about that. They are living in the coconut pilled moment. And when it ends, it ends. And I'm sure that she will do interviews. Maybe she'll sit down with Leslie Stahl and she'll do it with Tim Walls and do something big after the convention. But she will be in front of people nonstop next week. Oh, yeah. She'll be in front of people nonstop. That, that's a given. I mean, the DNC is going to be packed. But when she does sit down, they're all going to be scripted interviews. And in terms of the standard, you know, holding her to her old policies, and maybe this backfires on her in some ways, the most accurate representation of what kind of policies Kamala Harris supports are the ones that came out of the Biden-Harris administration. And she's going to have to live with that. If that's not good for inflation, that's one thing. It's absolutely not good for inflation. Anybody can tell you that. Anybody with a pulse right now can tell you that. If it's trending in her direction, which I believe that it is, Maybe it ends up better. But Donald Trump has been, for instance, saying that he's going to introduce a big, beautiful health care plan. 
and there are no specifics on it. And it's for good reason, because if he gives specifics on it, then Kamala Harris is just going to steal it. And Kamala is being held to a standard where she has to tell you the nuts and bolts of things where people are saying, you tell us exactly that. She's supposed to talk about her economic plan on Friday. Bullshit. They're just asking her to show up. She's a ghost. The press is already saying it'll be, quote, light on detail. They don't know. Could it be as light as big and beautiful? Are, I doubt it. Are you actually Next up. arguing that Donald Trump is held to a lower standard than Kamala Harris? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I am. Uh, if next you could say, up. I'm going to get rid of Obamacare and I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do, yeah. then that is the lowest standard of all Republicans time. aren't really known for creating large government programs. Yeah. You still you know, need a health care policy. Well, you know what? The, a health care <laughs> policy doesn't need a huge government program. It's about private stuff. Also, she gets away uh, with being for Medicare really for, for all and then not and then whatever. Yeah, but uh, also Donald Trump did not come up with no taxes on tips for corporate lawyers and hedge fund <laughs> right. managers. Uh, no, I, 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 yes. Yes. The idea. Yes. I tip my hedge fund managers. <laughs> yes. You hear how they're just laughing at her, laughing at her for being such a fucking idiot, being so in, uninformed and probably on the Kamala Harris payroll and just spreading more of this, these lies and propaganda. Oh, Lord Jesus. Breaking. Breaking report, Harris campaign and Google Cloud could face lawsuit after fake news headline scheme. WDAY, WDAY Radio, a local news station in Fargo, North Dakota, is contemplating legal action after the Kamala Harris campaign allegedly manipulated WDAY headlines to falsely suggest support for her in an ad campaign, according to the station's president in a statement to the Daily Caller. Similar to how Kamala Harris's campaign inaccurately used the California sheriff in her video as an endorsement. He has denied that claim. A recent Axios report revealed that the Harris campaign has been altering news headlines and descriptions in Google search ads to give the impression that prominent news outlets are endorsing her. Should they file, this may open the door for multiple other organizations to follow suit. So expect more lawsuits. And if the California sheriff really wanted to, I'm pretty sure he could probably have her arrested. The Trump war room. Fact check your fact check. President Trump announced an executive order in May of 2020 capping the cost of insulin at $35. One of Biden's first acts as president was repealing this executive order so that he could then take credit for it. So. Kamala Harris coming out and claiming she wants no tax on tips and stealing Trump's policy and his campaign promise isn't the beginning of the Harris Biden regime administration stealing the hard work and accomplishments of Donald J. Trump and then trying to pass them off as their own in more of these lies and more of these cheap fakes. Trump. $35 insulin. I did that. I did the insulin. And fact check, supposedly, according to Kamala HQ, this is a blatant lie. They So they say. Trump did not cap insulin costs. Biden-Harris did for seniors through the Inflation Reduction Act. Trump's Project 2025 wants to repeal it, which would raise insulin costs for over a million Americans. And the worst part about this is, is that the Kamala HQ, the Kamala Harris campaign, Harris Walls, Democrats, the left, they're putting out these fake false fact checks, which are in essence lies, then adding compounding more lies on top of them with Project 2025, which A, Trump has nothing to do with, and two, this is entirely untrue. It's going to be reform to Obamacare, which would actually improve the overall program for everybody. So I want to read a comment to you guys and, and, and a thank you for you guys leaving these comments. Like I said, I can't wait to read them all. A lot of them I've replied to. We've gone back and forth in conversations and discussion. And this one here says this was after Kamala sent that shocking email after the Trump and Elon conversation. This comment from Jason Ryan She's seen it happening and caused it and contributed to it. Don't be fooled, you sheep. She will just lie to you again and again, over and over again. And you sheep will end up voting for her just like you did Biden. Our country and its economy is your fault because you voted Sleepy Joe and Kamala in office to begin with. Now, let me know what you guys think about that. Can't wait to read all your comments. If you're still watching, give this video a thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't. 
And like I said, it would be a shame if this video got shared to all the Democrats you know on Facebook.